Nestle The world's largest food producer, boasts over 2,000 brands produced in more than 400 factories located in 189 countries. The company annually amasses around $100 billion in sales from an assortment of products. Such as Perrier, Espresso, Coffee Mate, Hot Pockets, Kit Kat, Crunch Bars, Trader's Ice Cream, Power Bars, L'Oreal, Purina. Making it virtually impossible to avoid using one of their products throughout life. In 1867, disturbed by the high rate of infant mortality, Henry Nestle developed Baby Formula, a milk-based substitute for babies who couldn't breastfeed. Despite his noble intentions, Nestle never marketed its product as superior to breast milk. Sadly, after Nestle's death, the company's integrity waned. During the 1970s, cigarettes enjoyed peak popularity, partly due to skillful and deceptive advertising campaigns. Borrowing from this playbook, Nestle executed an equally misleading campaign to peddle its baby formula. By way of compensated doctors and deceptive advertisements, Nestle convinced the public that formula was superior to natural breast milk, a claim that couldn't be further from the truth. But their deception didn't end there. Nestle hired hundreds of saleswomen in Africa and Asia, dressing them as nurses to propagate the false benefits of baby formula in local communities. These saleswomen, at Nestle's discretion, offered formula samples to nursing mothers. These samples lasted just long enough for mothers to stop producing milk but not long enough to sustain the baby until weaning. Consequently, when the samples ran out, mothers no longer capable of nursing were forced to buy more formula from Nestle. However, many of these women couldn't afford formula or the milk it was intended to be mixed with, so they diluted it with water. In areas where education, particularly for women, was lacking, many women didn't realize the water they were providing their babies was often contaminated. This led to the death of millions of infants due to contamination and others growing up nutritionally deficient. In 1978, Nestle executives were summoned before the United States Senate to explain the infant deaths associated with their formula. But like most corporations, it refused to take responsibility for how mothers prepared the baby formula. They weren't entirely absolved, though. In 1981, new regulations were enacted in the United States, making it illegal to compare breast milk to formula, which was Nestle's entire marketing strategy. Did this lead Nestle to cease their formula campaign? Certainly not. They simply shifted the majority of their operations to Asia and Africa. While women and babies in these developing countries suffered the most, doctors worldwide were paid to give new mothers free cans of Nestle baby formula. This often led to babies never developing a taste for natural breast milk, the healthier and free option. Nestle continues to spread lies about its formula even though. The American Pediatric Association, the World Health Organization, UNICEF, and others insist that breast milk is always better if available. The World Health Organization estimates that the worldwide elimination of baby formula could save approximately 820,000 children's lives annually. When you consider this, even briefly, it's heartbreaking that this company is still allowed to aggressively market baby formula. When we know the potential harm it can cause babies. Of course, there are valid reasons why a baby may not be able to breastfeed or a mother might not be able to provide breast milk. I'm certainly not arguing that formula should be eradicated entirely. But every mother deserves the right to make an informed choice for their baby. And Nestle has repeatedly deprived them of that right by globally disseminating what could be termed misinformation. As if duping mothers and harming babies wasn't enough, Nestle has a lengthy record of other human rights abuses within their production pipeline. The company has been called out for sourcing fish for its pet food brands from Thai businesses that employ slave labor. Although Nestle stated that it was taking steps to address the issue and sever ties with the offenders, it clearly didn't adequately vet its ingredient sources. But this scandal is insignificant compared to the company's practices in chocolate production. Much of the world's cocoa is grown in Africa, and to boost profit margins, Nestle seeks opportunities to purchase cheaper beans. To reduce their beans costs, these farms must drastically cut labor costs, often achieved through child labor. In 2000, a report accused Nestle of purchasing blood cocoa from the Ivory Coast. The company maintains it opposes child labor but cannot always guarantee that the cocoa sourced from certain regions won't involve child labor. This is hardly the robust stance one might expect from a global corporate leader. In 2005, the International Labor Rights Fund lodged a lawsuit against the company on behalf of 3 million children. The lawsuit alleged that the children were trafficked to the Ivory Coast, enslaved, and experienced beatings at the plantation that Nestle sourced from. Yet again, Nestle attempted to sidestep the situation, claiming it was unaware of the child labor and abuse. 
Nestle has a massive water business that is as controversial as it is profitable. This division of their company spans the globe, operating under various brand names like Poland Spring, Perrier, S. Pellegrino, and Pure Life. According to reports, Nestle's water business generates approximately $8 billion annually. The business model, however, has raised serious concerns regarding environmental impact and ethics. Nestle often extracts water from communities, sometimes during periods of drought or water scarcity only to bottle and sell it back to those very communities and beyond, making enormous profits in the process. In certain areas, Nestle has been accused of virtually draining the local water supply, and then selling it back to the residents at inflated prices. Cases such as Flint, Michigan, where the company extracted clean underground water while the city suffered a water contamination crisis. Or California, where it continued to pump billions of gallons of water despite severe drought conditions, have been criticized heavily. Critics argue that water should be considered a basic human right, and the exploitation of such a crucial resource for profit is unethical. Nestle's defense generally involves job creation and economic stimulation in the areas where they operate. However, critics claim this doesn't justify the potential environmental and social harm caused by their practices. Despite several controversies and widespread public outcry, Nestle's water business continues to thrive. Serving as a stark example of the company's questionable ethics and aggressive business tactics.